Headmaster Charleston, faculty members, fellow HQDs, family and friends, welcome. We never thought this day would come. We prayed for its quick delivery, crossed days off our calendars, counted hours, minutes, and seconds. And now that it's here, I'm sorry it is. Because it means there won't ever be another night of HQ like this. It's Gilmore Girls Trivia Night! Kiddos, 30 days half September, April, June, and November. But it's January. That's one of the, all the rest of the months. January half, 31 days. And this is day 31, Throwback Thursday. We're throwing it all the way back to the year 2000 when a little show called Gilmore Girls debuted on a little network called The CW. You love it, our Marines love it, my sister loves it, and we love it here at HQ, the live mobile game show where you answer questions to win cash. I am MC Scott Cat, Scott Rogowski, but for tonight, and tonight only, my name is Bill, and this is our quiz. I'm live from Taylor Deuce's town meeting with all my stars Halloweeners, including Tanya Marsh, Melissa Ray, Kylie, Lizzie Burden, Adrian Wagner, Tinker Balla, Emma Joy, and Abby Gordon and Rogers. It's a big, fat, happy, sunshine day for all of you playing HQ tonight. I'm asking 12 questions about Lorelai, Rory, Emily, and the rest of them. If you can waltz with Luke through all 12, you'll be splitting our $1,000 cash prize. But you're playing for more than just money on HQ, you're playing for points too. Those points, of course, are going to help you level up. Leveling up helps you win HQ because you get free passes that allow you to coast through the quiz. Yeah, you get them by answering questions, you get points. By sharing on social, you get points. Anybody on level four right now, you can get questions one through four wrong and still be in it to win it at Q5. That's how that works. Get to level 10, just answer a few more questions to win the whole shebang. They're like extra lives that you don't have to pay for and they last the entire season. But you can buy an extra life too, if you want, or earn them for free by playing five days in a row, or referring your friends extra lives, st stay keeping the game if you get a question wrong, erasers help you if you're playing with people nearby, if they erase a wrong answer, free passes, all of these are handy dandy power-ups to help get you across the finish line into the winner's circle. You want to win the big money? Oh, we're giving out more dough than Weston's Bakery in season two, because for every point you earn, we chip pennies into the season finale jackpot, and those pennies are adding up. Let's see where we're at now. $44,022. You could put a down payment on your Dragonfly in. With those stacks, if you think 44 k is a lot, it is, but it's not as much as 75 k That's our prize next Wednesday night. Well, I'll be coming to you live from Australia in a way you've never seen before. I'm throwing another shrimp on the bobby for a special HQ event in celebration of Lego Movie. I'm going where no host has ever gone before to present HQ in a way you've never seen before. Lego Movie 2, the second part. We're putting 75,000 up for grabs, plus a handful of lucky players will win a rare limited edition collectible capsule. That's happening next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. You're not gonna wanna miss that. I gotta start packing for Australia, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Right now, it's time to get silly with the gilly. Are you Team Dean? Team Jess? Team Logan? Team Scott? Are you gonna get hit by a deer? Or are you gonna steal a yacht? Let's find out by getting down in the nitty gritty and getting this show on the road. Everybody say it with me. In Omnia Paratus. For Cumero, Numero Uno. What is the Gilmore Girls' favorite thing to drink? For Loco, coffee or Pumplemousse seltzer? Favorite thing to drink? I'm gonna quote Lorelai here. Everything in my life has something to do with coffee. I believe in a former life I was coffee. Yeah, these girls gotta have their java. Mmm. There's even a Stars Hollow coffee brand. 360,669. Got this one right. You're keeping it caffeinated tonight and Sunday. Oh yeah. This Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, folks. And you know what I say. Move over Maroon 5. HQ has a way more entertaining halftime show for you. We're teaming up with our friends at Wendy's to bring you free burgers for life. I'm gonna be grilling you with bacon trivia. And if you know your pig meat, you could literally be bringing home the bacon because one lucky person will find themselves chest deep in Baconators. Plus, we're dropping big bucks, $25,000 and free burgers for life. Or if you're a vegetarian, free buns. It all goes down. Halftime, Super Bowl Sunday, where's the beef? Right here in HQ. But right now we gotta get back to our favorite coffee drinkers. Mmm. That's good Java. Q2, 
Which famous actress played Sookie, Lorelai's best friend? Melissa McCarthy, Tina Fey, or Jane Lynch? Sookie? Wait, are we doing True Blood trivia now? No. There was a Sookie in Gilmore Girls 2, played by this actress who slummed it in Stars Hollow before becoming an A-list, Oscar-nominated box office gold. Yeah, that's Melissa McCarthy. Mm-hmm. She was Sookie and 291,870 finding themselves happily scotched in acceptance. Deep frying Q3 tonight. What prestigious college does Rory end up attending? Yale, Rutgers, or Tulane? You lost about 100,000 in Q2. I hope you have your free level, your free pass to get you through to Q3 here. Rory makes the Gilmore family proud by getting accepted into three Ivy League schools, and even though she had her heart set on Harvard, she decided to go to Grandpa's. And after giving it a lot of thought, I have decided I'm going to Yale. Bulldog, Bulldog, bow, wow, wow, Eli Yale. Why did you drop out of Yale? 310,806. Joining Handsome Dan at Q4, graduating. Who does Lorelai call off her wedding to toward the start of the second season? Rory's dad, Rory's doctor, or Rory's teacher? Hmm. Second season going way back now. Max was a nice guy. He saw the potential in Rory and saw the romantic potential in Lorelai. So much so that he asked her to marry him. She said yes, but called it off just days before. Ah, poor Mr. Medina, Rory's teacher. Yeah, Max Medina was Rory's teacher. Could have been her stepdad, 217,319. Graduating from Chilton at Q4, the rest of you getting schooled. Maybe your extra life or free pass can get you in for Q5. What was unusual about Lorelai as a child? Extra long fingers, she didn't cry, or she had a big head. Lorelai as a child. You know, Rory was trying to do a visual family history project for school, and she wanted a baby picture of Lorelai, but Emily doesn't have any. Why? Because seven-year-old Lorelai burned them all. She was ashamed. Look. As a child, your mother had an unusually large head. The best thing about it was that she would tell me, constantly. My first complete sentence was, Big head want Dolly. Big head want Dolly. Big head is your answer, and 124,191 big heads want Q6. Lost about 180,000. Ouchie, wowie, savage. Slightly savage, not... It's not going all, all the way in the meter. Q6. Richard memorably insults Emily after she threatens to consume what at lunch in Europe? Two glasses of wine, steak cooked rare, or fast food? Oh, famously stern and a bit stuck up, Richard, played by the late great Edward Herman, has some strong opinions on his wife's luncheon habits. Take a look. I'm going to get up at 10, and I'm going to have two glasses of wine at lunch every single day. Only prostitutes have two glasses of wine at lunch. Well then buy me a boa and drive me to Reno, because I am open for business. Two glasses of wine is the answer. 83,728 of you getting tipsy at Q6. Perhaps you're getting drunk on victory tonight? Past the halfway point, you gotta answer six more. Q7, what does Rory yell as she runs away from Jess after their first kiss? Call me, see you later, or welcome home. Now Rory, of course, is technically still dating Dean when Jess finds her outside of Sookie's wedding upon his return to Star Hollow. So while they share a passionate smooch, initiated by Rory, she's gotta book it out of there. Oh my God, I have to go. Oh, welcome home. Oh, welcome home. Yeah, there's a nice welcome wagon. Welcome home, 42,608. Welcome Q8 o'clock at the Oasis. The rest of you getting beaked by a swan. Q8, when Emily visits Luke's to urge him to go back to Lorelei, what menu item does she learn about? Mud pie, banoffee pudding, or molten lava cake? Oh my God, I went to Luke's, I got this sweet mug. Mm. Emily sneers at this dish when she's over at Luke's, trying to repair the damage she might have done to the lovebirds. Kirk breaks it down for her. What is mud pie? Oh, that's awesome. It's chocolate pie with Oreo cookie crust. Sometimes you can get Luke to put gummy worms in it, like worms in the mud. Mud pies! Your answer, 30,384 of you. Pies in the sky. 
going off to Q9, the rest of you, you fell asleep at Miss Patty's dance studio, apparently. Wake up! Q9, in Rory's valedictorian speech, who does she not mention as a Lorelei approved role model? Lucille Ball, Jane Austen, or Patti Smith? I gave you some of that speech at the start of the show. Great speech. Who wrote that? Rory or Amy Sherman Palladino? Even after they all pledged not to, everyone was on the verge of blubbering after hearing Rory speak about her best friend, the dazzling woman from whom she received her name and her life's blood, Lorelei, who provided some pretty good role models. Unflagging in her efforts to give me role models from Jane Austen to Eudora Welty to Patti Smith. Eudora Welty, not Lucille Ball. Lucy, 12,673 on the ball tonight. The rest of you got some splaining to do. Or maybe you just don't remember that, that, that was a very hard question. That was very, that was trivia. That was trivial. But congrats to all you got it right. You're at Q10. When Paris and Jess are discussing books, what writing advice does Paris give for Jack Kerouac? Stop, develop the characters, or edit. Paris Geller, how do you feel about her? She's rather opinionated, brutally honest, even when critiquing literary giants like On the Road author Kerouac. She's got one word for the self-indulgent Jack. Edit. Edit is her advice. Yeah, okay, Paris. Well, good advice. 7,719 got nothing behind you, just questions ahead of you, as is ever so on the road and on HQ. You're getting Q11 right now. The penultimate question on this Gilmore Girls Tribute Night. $1,000 is your prize. You got to answer this and one more. What does Rory say after her first kiss with Dean? Wow, thank you, or that's it. I asked about Rory's first kiss with Jess. Rory got around, all right? Lots of kisses on this show. Can't leave Dean out of this quiz. No matter what team you're on, you gotta admit that when these two share that kiss in Deuce's Market, it's pretty cute when Rory says. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you is the answer. 8,612, remember this pivotal moment. Oh. You've got all the feels right now, don't you? And you have all but one question to answer, separating you from that cash and the ultimate bragging rights as a Gilmore Girls trivia champion. It's Q12 at all boils down to this. The final question, who's it gonna be about? Rory, Emily, Richard, Luke, Lorelai, Dean, Jess, uh, uh, who's the other, Mrs. Kim, maybe? Q12, which character is present when Oi with the poodles already is first uttered? Luke, Emily, or Richard? Oi, Oi with Q12 already. Oi is a funny word. Poodles is a funny word. Put them together. You got your favorite new catchphrase that's knocking. What you talking about, Willis? Right out of first place. Lorelai's mother is never amused by her daughter's antics. And this instance, well, this was Oi no with different. the poodles already. <laughs> so from now on. Emily was there. Lorelai's mommy, Rory's grandmommy, 5,818. You're finding yourselves there in the winner's circle. You won, baby. Okay, Abhishek, congratulations. You got 9,689 points. SDPR, you got 9,000, same amount. Ali Cat, daddy, no. What? <laughs> That, I don't know what the rest of it is because it, it got all strung. Congratulations on all those Oi points. Oh, with the winners already. 5,818. You're not saying, oh, Gavalt, you're saying, I won. You did it. Congratulations. You know you're Gilmore Girls. You, you deserve honorary citizenship in Stars Hollow. Rumble Row, Bre Brina 94, Rage 26, Overtime. Kai Amazing, you were amazing. Fallen Star 127, you're a superstar. Alyssa, Alicia 1990. So you were 10 years old when Gilmore Girls came out. Prime time to be a fan. And you just earned 17 cents for that fandom. Congratulations. Plus, of course, all those points you got from answering those questions. Yeah, those points help you level up, of course, so you can win the big bucks. We got lots of surprises in store this season. Remember, we're giving away more money than we did last season, like this Sunday, $25,000. Yeah, plus free burgers for life. Wendy's bacon eaters. Bacon eaters. Bacon, 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 bacon! Halftime, Super Bowl Sunday. Don't miss that big game. Oh, the mouth-watering burger right there. Cheese, bacon, double patty. 
And if you don't like burgers, fine. You'll you can still win some. We'll give you something. But that's that's Sunday, Wednesday, February sixth. Not twenty five k, not fifty k, seventy five thousand dollars. A special HQ event presented by the Lego Movie Two. And who's that? Who, who, who's that silhouette? Hmm. What's happening there? What is happening Wednesday, February sixth? Well, we're giving out seventy five thousand plus limited edition collectible capsules. You do not want to miss that one. Lego Two, the second part coming in the theater soon. It's a good one. It's a good movie. That's all for tonight, folks. You've been wonderful. I've been okay. I've been Scott Rogowski, if you, if you forgot. You can follow me on the socials there. And I'm saying goodnight tonight, reminding you that on this date in 1919, in Cairo, Georgia, a boy was born to a family of sharecroppers, a boy who would grow up into one of the most important figures in American history, the 20th century at least, changing not just the face of sport, but the face of this country. Happy birthday, Jackie Robinson. He would have been 100 years old today. Yes, he famously broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball with the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947, but he also broke the color barrier in business, becoming the first black person to serve as a VP of a major American corporation. And his actions in the Army during World War II helped hasten the integration of the US military. He was a tireless champion of civil rights, an insane athlete, not just baseball, track and field, basketball, football. And from everything I've read, he was just an all around good dude. I leave you with, with a quote of his, Jackie Robinson, life is not a spectator sport. If you're gonna spend your whole life in the grandstand just watching what goes on, you're wasting your life. Get out there and play ball, HQties. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.